Hey everybody, Will here from Downtown Activities, back once more, not at uh, Erickson's house, uh, just here with my mug of tea. And Nanarimo is in full swing, it's now the middle of November, and I'm taking a break from my own writing to do another writing video for you guys. And I think one of the most divisive separations in fiction writing, sort of at all, comes down to those authors who prefer writing along an outline, or prefer writing without one, which is often referred to as discovery writing. As far as I'm aware, this has never turned to outright violence, but it really is a contentious issue. Others get entrenched in their style, and often refuse to admit that there is another way. So, which is better? Well, spoiler, they're both equally valid. It comes down entirely to personal preference, or the work being done. Today, I'm just going to go over both styles, talk about what both have going for them, the sort of the weaknesses of both, if you want to look at it that way, and when I tend to use each in my own work. Outline writing is often the method that is taught. Creative writing courses, master classes, books about writing, they all sort of lean in this direction. This actually makes a lot of sense in some ways. Taking a book or story from a vague idea all the way through to a finished product, or even, dare I say it, publication, is a really daunting prospect. Hundreds of pages, likely dozens of characters, tens of thousands of words. If you look at it all as a single element, it's hard to even begin. An outline breaks it all down into understandable and processable chunks, and lets you organize not just the flow of the story and the main interactions and events, but the process of writing itself. Everything has its slot to fit within, and those who rely on this process of writing often make extremely detailed outlines, essentially storyboarding out the entire thing, sometimes down to individual scenes and lines of dialogue. Some authors even draw literal storyboards, and this isn't a bad method. Nobody apart from you ever asked to see any of these outlines, so go nuts. Anything that helps you wrap your head around the story you are trying to tell is completely worthwhile. Outline writing usually tends to go one of two ways as it transitions into writing itself, though of course there are as many methods as there are authors, so there are plenty of other directions. These two main paths are the outline becoming the writing itself, or the outline being set aside and used like a blueprint or reference. I said a moment ago that a lot of authors who rely on outlines tend to make very detailed ones. Sometimes those outlines simply get more and more detailed until they morph into the work itself. The outline was a skeleton around which the muscles, guts, blood, and flesh of the story were added, bit by bit, until your own adorable little Frankenstein's monster is ridden from the dead while you presumably stood there laughing maniacally while lightning cracked in the background. I myself don't really use this method of writing, but I think it has a lot of merit. It breaks the work down into little pieces, and you just begin filling in any blanks you see until it all comes together. With a polished pass for readability and continuity, you end up with a super cohesive and tight end product. Writing your outline and setting it aside to use as a reference is probably a little more common. In this case, the outline itself isn't consumed by the work, like a small town deputy in a blob horror B-movie from the 50s, but instead remains as a guiding light and reference for the work. All through your writing, you're consulting the outline that you've made to ensure that certain story moments happen when they're supposed to, that characters have the right arcs and that they interact with other characters or experience some event at the right time and with the right outcome. This provides to some degrees a little more wiggle room than the first method, since while your writing is being guided by the outline, it is still separate from it, but that rigidity really depends on you as a writer, which comes up to my next point. One of the main arguments that gets thrown around against this form of writing is that rigidity. The argument tends towards this form of writing actually being restrictive, and that it creates worse stories because the characters aren't given proper room to grow and make their own decisions. Proponents of the discovery method of writing often talk about characters as if they're making their own decisions separate from the author, and that to force an outline and force certain story beats onto them is almost cruel. It de it's depriving the characters of the story they want to tell. The thing is, some stories need that level of guidance in order to work at all. Outline writing often makes a work a little more cohesive and detailed from the beginning, and a lot of stories and story types really rely on that to work effectively. At the end of the day, you are the author. You are dictating the rules of the world, the direction the interactions take, and the success or failure of every plan brewed, shot taken, or dramatically attempted. A strong outline just aids you in this. In my own writing, I don't use outlines that much, at least not detailed ones. 
Personally, I've just gotten comfortable with the discovery writing method. I have loose ideas of story beats that are supposed to happen or certain scenes, but nothing truly concrete. When I use outlines, it's usually because I need to wrap my head around especially complex or detail-oriented stories. Stuff like mysteries, for example, I find much easier working from an outline, or works where each chapter has certain themes and messages that must be present. I also find outlines extremely helpful when working on a series, especially with multiple interconnected storylines. Understanding at a series-wide scale what is happening and where is sometimes vital to the structure of the work itself, especially if it has any cyclical or philosophical elements. I don't think it would be a bad idea to separate out pages in a word processing app on a computer where each page is a different chapter. You could jot down on each page what characters are in that chapter, where it starts and ends, and everything important that needs to happen. Then you can just go back in one at a time and fill in each of those pages, filling them out until they become entire chapters, since you've already got the salient details for each one done in advance. On the other side of the writing coin is what is commonly called discovery writing. Basically, this is just writing without an outline, but the theory behind it is a little more complex than that. The idea, as I've always understood it, is that if your characters are complex and deep enough and the world you've built detailed enough, all you have to do is begin to introduce those story elements and precipitating events and watch as your characters make their own decisions and the story evolves from there. This is overall a romantic ideal, and in practice it doesn't quite work that way. Discovery writing is just meant to keep a story from being constrained by a hard and fast outline. It doesn't mean that you don't have something of an idea of the story, where the characters will end up or the decisions they'll make, but that over the course of writing you're allowing the story to explore some of its own directions. You might find yourself introducing characters you originally hadn't intended, or plot elements that weren't in your original idea. You might well write certain scenes not knowing how they'll ultimately going to fit into the story, or find yourself setting up important secrets without actually knowing them yourself until much later. In an ideal case, over the course of writing, you'll experience some of those same reveals alongside your characters. Some people feel like outline writing is too constrained. Sometimes over the course of writing, an element can change organically, or you might have a new idea that you think, overall, makes the story better or characters more interesting. The worry is that the outline can end up feeling like it's bound in iron, with little or no storytelling flexibility. If a vital element is about to change, one that is going to invalidate a big chunk of that outline or break the story in such a way that it just never quite fits the outline again, some people just shy away from that. They refuse to step away from the outline because it's uncharted territory. If it reaches this point, the outline is now holding you back, especially if the change you're considering will lead to a better story or better characters. This is one of the main arguments people use in favor of the discovery writing method. This all might sound chaotic, and it can be, but I find this is the easier method to just sit down and start writing on an idea I have. I don't feel the pressure of figuring it all out before I begin. Instead, I can just write out character descriptions, dialogues, or scenes, and begin to build a loose idea of the story around those. Opponents of this idea tend to feel like discovery writing is too loose, and can lead to very scattered and disjointed stories. Sometimes it feels like it's pretty obvious that the author didn't have an idea at all and was just winging it the whole way through. Characters and story can end up feeling erratic and sort of broken. Personally, I think this is an issue with rewriting and editing, not discovery writing itself. Neil Gaiman said that the point of your second draft is to make it look like you knew what you were doing all along, and I feel like it's pretty poignant here. It serves as a good reminder that writing isn't a one-and-done process, and you can go back and rewrite anything later, which is important to remember if you're considering the discovery writing method. The other big thing that often sets it back is that it can feel easy to abandon projects if you don't know what to write next. The first chapter might be easy to just sit down and write, but if you don't have an idea further forward than that, a lot of projects can just get set aside, sometimes never to be picked up again. I do think that discovery writing, or at least outline-free writing, tends to suffer most in stuff like TV shows. The shows that work the best are the ones that tell a complete story over the various seasons and come to a final end. Something like Breaking Bad is a good example of this. The show ran five seasons and ended essentially at the height of its popularity, because the writer set out to tell a story and ended the show when that story had been told. It has its filler episodes, of course, any show will, but the show goes through its evolutions and arcs and ends on a poignant note as the main character's story has reached its conclusion. The Walking Dead is the other side of that coin, a show that has told good stories, but never ended. Each time they finish a character's arc or defeat a villain, the show must drum up a new one and keep driving itself forward. 
the characters begin to feel flat after a while. Their arcs have happened, their stories have been told, and all of this new adversity doesn't feel like it's contributing anything. You reach a point where you feel like the characters shouldn't be struggling this much because they've overcome similar challenges a dozen times. So why did they just give in so easily? The answer is that the writers needed it to happen so they'd have a story to tell, and there are ways to do this right, but it's hard to make any of the stakes matter at that point. Discovery writing is the method that I tend to use. It's just always how I've sort of written, so I've gotten comfortable with it. I like being able to just sit down and write the first chapter without knowing the story, or introducing a world and some characters that I find unique or interesting, and then working on the overarching tale later. The problem with this, as I said earlier, is that it can be easy to just step away from these projects if I don't have an idea of how to keep them going. So what's the conclusion here? Well, as I said at the beginning, they're both equally valid. Not just that, but in my opinion, and I want to be clear here, this is just my opinion, you should use the method that works best for you, because trying to force yourself into a method you're not comfortable with is going to be a miserable experience and ultimately be detrimental to your writing. But in my opinion, you should use both styles, or at least elements of both. Not every story needs a hard and fast outline, but they can be valuable when working on certain types of stories, such as mysteries, stories with complex themes or philosophies, specific timing, and long series. Discovery writing, however, opens the door to creativity and allows stories to change and characters to evolve in ways that the author didn't initially intend. Outlines don't often have space for introducing new characters or combining elements of multiple ideas in the same way, but the structure they provide can be invaluable at times. Again, in all of these videos, I want to stress that this is just my opinion and my experience. Everyone writes differently, and you should find and stick with the method that you're the most comfortable with. If you haven't ever given this concept any thought, I would recommend giving both a try, just to see what you like and building your hybrid method from there. Writing can be intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. I really hope this video helps some of you out there figure out a method that works for you. I'll keep doing these writing related videos every once in a while since I've got a lot of concepts that I kind of want to work through, and I've got some other writing related projects in the works that will hopefully show up sooner or later. I really hope you guys are all getting a bunch of writing done yourselves, and in the meantime, go forth, slay dragons, sling spells, roll dice, and enjoy your downtime activities.